If you're someone who wants to start a career in data science, this video is for you. Hey everyone, I'm Sai Gupne and I'm a data and AI engineer in one of the top banks in Canada. If you're new to this channel, then we have uploaded a lot of videos around the IT industry in Canada and especially about the data analytics. And a lot of you guys have asked me what are the technical skills that you guys require if you want to start your career in data science. So in today's video, we are going to talk about step-by-step -step approach that you should be taking what are all the technical skills that you should be learning and most importantly some of my favorite resources that you can refer on youtube for free so if you want clarity about all the steps required for the job of a data scientist then watch the video till then so without any delay let's get started the very first step towards data science is learning a programming language so for that i recommend python because it's simple it's clear it's easy to learn and it has amazing support in the world of data when you're learning python start with the basics learn what are variables, how do you write loops, what are functions, what are object-oriented programming concepts. And once you have mastered all these basics, then you can move towards some of the uh, data analysis specific libraries in Python, for example, NumPy and Pandas. And if you want to get more comfortable with this language and increase your problem solving skills, then you can do some sort of data structured algorithm problems. So you don't have to be a competitive programmer when it comes to data structured algorithm. The only reason I'm including this thing is because it helps you to master the language and also test your programming abilities. And if you want some of the topics, then you can practice arrays, dictionaries, some sorting and searching algorithms, all the easy level questions on lead code, just to get yourself started with the Python programming. So after learning Python, the second skill that you'll need to learn is Git and the version control. See, once you are in the programming world and you start coding, you won't be working alone. You will need to track and manage your work and also you'll need some platform where you can work with a team. That's where the version control systems, they come in place. Start with very basics, understand how do you commit, how do you take the latest code, how do you push your code and collaborate with others. Also learn how do you create branches, what is a .git ignore file in a Python project and how do you resolve the merge conflicts. Trust me guys, this is one of the most crucial skills that you'll need to have because when you'll be working in the large teams, this particular skill is going to come a lot handy. Number three most important skill is SQL. Trust me guys, this is one of the most crucial skills because as a data professional, this is a skill that every one of us must have. Because most of the data in the companies, it's lying in the relational databases and you need some sort of programming language or skill and you will need a way by which you can interact with those databases. So SQL is what will help you to extract the right information from those databases. When it comes to a core concepts, you'll have to learn how exactly databases work and how do you write the queries? How do you write uh, the select statements? So how do you filter the data? How do you do group bias, joins, some of the advanced topics like window functions and CTs. And if you're looking forward to learn SQL in detail, I have already created an end-to-end -end video where you'll get to know all the skills required in the right sequence. And I will also share a GitHub repo from which you can practice all the SQL question step by step. So I'm going to leave that GitHub repo in the description and make sure to check that. Number four is statistics and maths. This is your core foundation. You'll need to understand statistics to make sense out of data. Focus on descriptive stats, probability, distributions, hypothesis testing, and basic linear algebra. So guys, when it comes to mathematics, you should be at least able to understand the patterns in the data, the trends in the data. You should be able to tell what is mean, median, mode. Imagine becoming a data scientist or a data professional and you, and you don't even know what exactly standard deviation is, what is normal distribution, and how do you use different kinds of charts. And if you are looking for one end-to-end -end video which can help you to learn all the mathematics that you'll require to become a data scientist, I'm going to leave the link in the description. Make sure to check that video. Number five is data analysis and visualization. So this is a time when whatever you have learned so far, you're going to implement it in form of a project. You are going to do some sort of data analysis because before you start creating your models, you'll need to understand what exactly is in your data. What are the common trends and patterns that you have found in the data and what kind of predictive analysis you will need to do. So in order to understand your data well, you'll have to do data analysis. If you talk about the core skills, it starts with basic Python libraries like pandas and numpy and then eventually you'll start creating visualizations using the libraries called matplotlib, seaborn or plotly. When it comes to building dashboards, there's another python library called streamlit which is very popular in the industry. I will suggest you guys to check out that as well and create some dashboards for yourself. So guys, if you have made this far in the video, I'm pretty sure that you're finding it valuable. Make sure to subscribe the channel because it helps me to understand if my content is reaching to the right audience. Now let's get back to the video. And if you're looking for a detailed video about the data analysis roadmap, I've already created that. And for that as well, I'm going to leave 
the link in the description. So guys, number six is machine learning. So finally, we have entered the heart of data science, which is called machine learning. In simple language, machine learning is the time when you'll create the models which will do predictive analysis for you. So, so far, you have uh, done the basic data analysis. You have tried to find the trends and patterns in your data. Now you can create some sort of models which will help you to predict what will happen in the future. When it comes to machine learning, you can start with the supervised learning, which includes linear regression, logistic regression, decision trees, and random forests. You'll have to understand classification versus regression problems. You'll have to learn how do you split data, how do you train models, and evaluate them using matrices like accuracy, evan score, precision, recall, and then finally you move to the unsupervised learning, which will include k-mean clustering, hierarchical clustering, and PCA for dimensionality reduction. Some of the important concepts that you have to master include overfitting and underfitting, cross-validation, hyperparameter tuning, and pipelines and transformers. Use scikit-learn throughout in order to build your very first model. And if you want to go beyond machine learning, the step seven will include learning deep learning. It's a subset of machine learning that uses multi-layered neural networks to model complex patterns, which are especially useful in text, image, and audio data. Start with the basic structure of a neural network, which includes input layer, hidden layer, and the output layer. Then explore CNNs for the image data and RNNs for the sequence data. Here, you'll have to use the frameworks like PyTorch and TensorFlow. And if you are looking for a YouTube channel that can help you to learn the data science from scratch, I'm going to leave a link in the description, and here's the channel that you can follow. So these all were the core of data science. And once you have mastered the basics, you can choose your specialization from NLP, computer vision, ML ops, or maybe generative AI, right? So, so here I want to highlight two important specializations that you should definitely learn considering the state of industry right now. The first one being ML ops, because, because all the candidates, they will really know how do you create machine learning models, but how do you deploy them? How do you manage your ML projects in production? When you are going in the company, this skill becomes very crucial that you should know what is ML ops, Docker and CICD tools. So make sure to explore this as well. And the second one is generative AI. As you guys might already know, this is one of the fastest growing fields. You'll have to learn how the large language models like GPT, Claude, they generate human-like text or how diffusion models, they create images. Explore tools like LangChain, OpenAI APIs, and you'll have to experiment with building the AI apps. It could be the simple chatbot ads, some of the AI agents, whatever you really want to build, but you'll have to try your hands on these technologies as well. So guys, these are the specialization, right? So I have seen a lot of candidates, they don't even know the basics of machine learning or new deep learning or NLP, anything that we have discussed so far, and they will just start creating AI chatbots. It is good to know, but when you're applying for the data science job, generative AI skills can never trade off the traditional machine learning skills. So those are the prerequisites. But being in today's world, you'll also need to understand how these AI apps work. So you can consider it as a new requirement of the industry that you'll have to learn along with the machine learning skills. Number nine would be the most important skill. So far, we have tried to understand what are the technical skills that you require. But what's the point of technical skills if you're not able to secure a job? So from step number nine, we will start looking towards how do you get a job? The very first thing that you need to do is create projects and portfolio. And guys, when it comes to a projects, you'll have to shortlist your data sets very wisely. You'll have to shortlist the business problems and then start creating the projects. So when it comes to a good projects, they need to be end-to-end -end projects. For example, where you are defining a problem, then you're shortlisting a data set. Either you're preparing your data set, then you are doing some sort of exploratory data analysis. You try to find some sort of trends and patterns, and then at then you do some predictive analysis using machine learning models. And if you're looking for some good resources for your next data set for your data science projects, even for those, I'm going to leave all the links in the description. Make sure to check out that before you start on your next data science projects. And once you have created the data science project, another thing that you'll need to do is create your portfolio. You'll have to showcase all of your projects on GitHub. Try to create your own portfolio website as well, because once you are out in the industry, you will need to show what are all the results achieved, what are all the projects that you have created. And trust me, guys, there are not much candidates who have who have displayed their projects in a very good portfolio. So after creating projects, if you are presenting them in your own personal website, I think you're already a step ahead of all the other candidates that are applying for the same job opening. Another step number 10 and the final step would be to prepare for your career. For that, you have to follow some basic principles. The first one being you'll have to start working on your resume a resume which is not generalized and it looks like a data professional. And if you're looking for guidance, how do you create an optimized resume as a data professional? I've already uploaded a video. Please make sure to check out that. So once you've created the resume, make sure you also update your LinkedIn profile because 
that is the place from where you'll be applying for most of the jobs and you'll have to optimize your LinkedIn profile. So these two things, your resume and LinkedIn, they will help you to get the interview calls. But then comes the real preparation for the interviews. You'll also have to prepare for the ML case studies and scenario based question and also for the behavioral questions. And to prepare for everything that we have said so far, make sure to do a lot of mock interviews with your peers. And guys, one golden advice that I want to share, if you really want to get a good job, then you'll have to start focusing on your network. Make sure to network with the right people from the industry so that you'll be able to get the right referrals and you will be able to get a job as soon as possible. So guys, that's it. Once you have followed all these 10 steps, no one can stop you from becoming a really good data scientist. Now before going, let me know in the comment sections below that from all of these 10 steps, on which topic we should create a dedicated video. And also you can let me know at which stage you are right now and what are the major challenges that you're facing so that in the future, I'm able to create more videos that will help me to clear your doubts. If you like the video, make sure to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.